So in this video, we're going to cover two things. I'm going to speak about the four main types of arbitrage in crypto that we've spoken about on this channel. And then I'm going to get into triangular arbitrage. And this is going to be a pretty short video. So the good news is you're going to get a lot in a very short space of time. You're going to understand what the four different types of arbitrage are. And then we're going to get into the basics and the fundamentals and the foundation of triangular arbitrage. So you're going to walk away with a whole breadth of knowledge. Let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, we're first going to start off talking about the four main types of arbitrage that we've spoken about on this channel, and then we're going to delve into triangular arbitrage. So let's get into that. So the first type of arbitrage we spoke about is where you can buy a coin on the ask and sell it at the bid on two different exchanges. So buy on this exchange, sell on this exchange, and the gap is your profit. So that's arbitrage number one. Arbitrage number two is triangular arbitrage. So triangular arbitrage is when you're just on one exchange, usually it doesn't have to be one exchange, but it can be just one exchange. And what you're looking to do is to buy a coin, sell it for a different coin and buy back the original coin all on one exchange, taking advantage of mispricing in the order book. And if none of that made sense to you, don't worry, because I'm going to bring it right back, right down into very, very broad basics and then build you back up again from there. But before we do that, the next type of arbitrage is what we call put call parity arbitrage. If you didn't catch me mentioning this on an earlier video, probably about a year ago now, actually, then definitely let me know. If you want me to do videos on put call parity arbitrage, ping it in the comments. Sean, I want to know about put call parity arbitrage. Now, one of the things I'm excited about on that is no one's talking about it. So I think there's probably lots of opportunities there no one's even looked at. And I'm also looking to develop something on Crypto Wizards for that. So again, if you're keen to understand what is put call parity arbitrage, let me know. But I've put a little hint already on the slide. And then finally, there's sports arbitrage. So if you put in cryptocurrency sports arbitrage, type it in YouTube or Google, you should see a video that I did recently come up. And I got a lot of great response from that video. I loved finding out that sports arbitrage was a real thing. You can do it in crypto and it was super interesting. So definitely go check that video out. Okay, with that said, let's get into the foundations and the fundamentals of triangular arbitrage. So the first thing I'd like you to do, if you don't know what triangular arbitrage is, is just bear with me on this very, very, very basic example. And I guarantee you, if you never understood triangular arbitrage, you're going to walk away today and you're going to understand it. So picture that you're walking into a room and in this room, there are three tables and you go to the first table and they say, hey, I'm selling lemonade for a dollar. You'll get a lemonade for one dollar. The next table is saying, hey, by the way, if you bring us a lemonade, we'll give you two sprites. And the final table is saying, hey, I'll let you exchange one sprite for one dollar. Now, these tables aren't actually talking to each other. You can picture them like order books. They're their own order book in their own right, and they're trading based on what supply is coming in and what demand aggressive buyers and sellers are buying up that order book. So you can picture it analogous to that in terms of the crypto market. But these, these tables aren't really talking to each other, yet you can spot a clear issue over here. So the clear issue is as follows. Let's just assume that you have $1 on you. You're going to walk over to the first table and you're going to say, hey, here's my dollar. Please can I have a lemonade? So now you've given up your dollar. You have no more dollars, but you have a lemonade. Then the next thing you're going to do is take your lemonade over to exchange for two sprites. So you go to the next table and you say, hey, I've got a lemonade. Can I have your two Sprite deals. So now you've got these two cans of Sprite. By the way, don't ask me why I'm talking about lemonade and Sprite, but anyway, bear with this. So now you have two cans of Sprite. So what do you do? You walk over to the next table and you say, hey, I've got two cans of Sprite. Can I exchange it for $2? Of course, they say, no problem. Here's your Sprite. And now you've got $2. Well, now you've just made 100% profit. You've just turned $1 into $2. Welcome to arbitrage. In particular, welcome to triangular arbitrage. So you can see where it gets its name. It's the triangle between essentially three pairs, but each pair has two common pairs 
you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So now let's look at a real world example. We've got LTC to BTC, we've got BNB to BTC, and we've got LTC to BNB. This is broadly how the prices actually look on the Binance exchange. And I tweaked some of the pricing to make sure in this example, it would show arbitrage. But nonetheless, this is how you actually need to think about arbitrage in cryptocurrency in the real world of cryptocurrency. So I want you to assume that you have 1000 Litecoin on you and you want to make some money. So you're going to do a quick calculation. You know that I've got this Litecoin and so what I want to do is sell that Litecoin or acquire Bitcoin. So I've put that as buy BTC, but really what you're doing is selling Litecoin to the bid and acquiring Bitcoin. So what you do is you take your thousand Litecoin and at this rate of 0.009, you now have nine Bitcoin. This is very much analogous to exchanging your dollar for lemonade. Then on the BNB BTC order book, you're going to take that Bitcoin and you're basically going to buy BNB. So you're going to divide it by 0.001 on the ask. And there's a reason why we're using the ask versus the bid. So I'm going to come to that separately. Um, but you want to divide it by 0.0012642 because what you're doing is buying BNB. BNB is on the left hand side. So we're actually going to divide it by the ask. And now you have 7,132 BNB. Now the good news is you can actually buy your Litecoin back. So you can take your 7,132 BNB divided by the Litecoin at the bit, 6.36, and you have 1,121 Litecoin, meaning that you've made 121 Litecoin in profit, which is a 12.13% arbitrage opportunity. Now 12.13 is pretty high. Usually a good arbitrage percentage in the real world is going to be between three and a half percent upwards. This is a lot more complex than going back to our triangle over here. But what I'd like to illustrate is that the principle is exactly the same. It has got a lot more complex because now we're looking at the asks versus the bids. And the reason why I know to use the ask and bid in the way that I did is because I've had to study and really understand the triangular arbitrage in order to build these algorithms for crypto wizards, which by the way is going very well. So I wanted to just show you this example. This is a real world example of what arbitrage would look like. Now, rather than you scratching your head and thinking, okay, how much BTC do I have? And then, you know, how much do I sell? And do I divide or do I multiply by the ask or the bid? These are the problems people have when it comes to doing triangular arbitrage is it's very manual and it's so easy to get it wrong. It's so easy to do a miscalculation and think there's an arbitrage opportunity when actually there really isn't. In other words, it's very, very easy to have human error here. It's also very easy to have an error on a spreadsheet. You know, when I was modeling triangular arbitrage for crypto wizards before developing it with code, um, on the Excel tool, I thought I had it all perfect. It turns out that when I actually had to write the code and go deep into every single process, my Excel model actually had some flaws in it. So even to automate this in Excel, is really, really tricky. And I do a lot of financial modeling for a living. So I'm someone who's very experienced in that. And yet I still found it quite tricky. So it's very important that this is a process that's automated. Actually, that's what we're doing with crypto wizards anyway. So it's an automatic process. But nonetheless, I still want to teach this to you so that you have a good understanding of the principles around triangular arbitrage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another video where I talk about the ask and the bid. And I'm going to show you a formula where you don't even have to apply any coin. Like in this example, we applied 1000 Litecoin. So let's pretend you don't care how much Litecoin or Bitcoin or BNB you have for a trade. Let's just pretend you want to know what the percentage is. Well, there is a mathematical algorithm to calculate that percentage. And in fact, there's a mathematical algorithm to do it both ways. You see, there are two different percentages that can come out of looking at an arbitrage opportunity. There's also something called the parity, which you need to look at as well to understand where the inherent flaw is or where the inherent gap is to capitalize on that arbitrage opportunity. So there's a lot more to look into. But for this video, I just wanted to give you the real basics. What is triangular arbitrage and how does it fit in in terms of the overall picture with all the other different types of arbitrage that we've been speaking about. So if you didn't understand triangular arbitrage, hopefully you have a very good understanding of it now and what it does. Don't worry if the bid and the ask is confusing to you and whether we're multiplying or dividing. I guarantee that this will make sense to you as we continue with these videos. But nonetheless, this should really help you understand, okay, 
this is the flow, this is what triangular arbitrage is, this is what I'm aiming to achieve and here's a good way to look at how I can calculate an arbitrage opportunity. I hope you got a lot of value from this. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.